the 37 verses on the practice of a bodhisattva by Togme Zangpo. Namo Lokeshvara Though he sees that in all phenomena there is no coming and going, he strives solely for the sake of beings. To the sublime teacher, inseparable from Avalokiteshvara, the protector of beings, I pay constant homage with respectful body, speech, and mind. The perfect Buddha's source of happiness and ultimate peace exist through having accomplished the sacred Dharma, and that in turn depends on knowing how to practice it. This practice of the Bodhisattvas I shall therefore now explain. Now that I have this great ship, a precious human life, so hard to obtain. I must carry myself and others across the ocean of samsara. To that end, to listen, reflect, and meditate day and night without distraction is the practice of a bodhisattva. In my native land, waves of attachment to friends and kin surge. Hatred for enemies rages like fire. The darkness of stupidity, not caring what to adapt or avoid, thickens. To abandon my native land is the practice of a bodhisattva. When unfavorable places are abandoned, disturbing emotions gradually fade. When there are no distractions, positive activities naturally increase. As awareness becomes clearer, Confidence in the Dharma grows. To rely on solitude is the practice of a bodhisattva. Close friends who have long been together will separate. Wealth and possessions gained with much effort will be left behind. Consciousness, a guest, will leave the hotel of the body. To give up the concerns of this life is the practice of a bodhisattva. In bad company, the three poisons grow stronger. Listening, reflection, and meditation decline, and loving kindness and compassion vanish. To avoid unsuitable friends is the practice of a bodhisattva. Through reliance on a true spiritual friend, one's faults will fade and good qualities will grow like a waxing moon. To consider him even more precious than one's own body is the practice of a bodhisattva. Whom can worldly gods protect themselves imprisoned in samsara? To take refuge in the three jewels who never fail those they protect is the practice of a bodhisattva. The Buddha taught that the unendurable suffering of the lower realms is the fruit of unvirtuous actions. Therefore, to never act unvirtuously, even at the cost of one's life, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Like dew on grass, the delights of the three worlds, by their very nature, evaporate in an instant. To strive for the supreme level of liberation, which never changes, is the practice of a bodhisattva. If all the mothers who have loved me since beginningless time are suffering, what is the use of my own happiness? So, with the aim of liberating limitless sentient beings, to set my mind on enlightenment is the practice of a bodhisattva. All suffering, without exception, arises from desiring happiness for myself, while perfect Buddhahood is born from the thought of benefiting others. Therefore, to really exchange my own happiness for the suffering of others is the practice of a bodhisattva. If someone driven by great desire seizes all my wealth or induces others to do so, to dedicate to him my body, possessions, and past, present, and future merit is the practice of a bodhisattva. If in return for not the slightest wrong of mine, someone were to cut off even my very head, 
through the power of compassion to take all his negative actions upon myself is the practice of a bodhisattva. Even if someone says all sorts of derogatory things about me and proclaims them throughout the universe, in return, out of loving kindness, to extol that person's qualities is the practice of a bodhisattva. Even if, in the midst of a large gathering, someone exposes my hidden faults with insulting language, to bow to him respectfully, regarding him as a spiritual friend, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Even if one I have lovingly cared for, like my own child, regards me as an enemy, to love him even more, as a mother loves a sick child, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Even if my peers or my inferiors, out of pride, do all they can to debase me, to respectfully consider them like my teachers on the crowd of my head, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Even when utterly destitute and constantly maligned by others, afflicted by terrible illness and prey to evil forces, to draw upon myself the suffering and wrongdoing of all beings, and not lose heart, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Though I may be famous and revered by many, and rich as the god of wealth himself, to see that wealth and glory of the world are without essence, and to be free of arrogance, is the practice of a bodhisattva. If one does not conquer one's own hatred, the more one fights outer enemies, the more they will increase. Therefore, with the armies of loving kindness and compassion, to tame one's own mind is the practice of a bodhisattva. Since pleasures and desirable things are like salt water, the more one tastes them, the more one's thirst increases. To abandon promptly all objects which arouse attachment is the practice of a bodhisattva. All that appears is the work of one's own mind. The nature of mind is primordially free from conceptual limitations. To recognize this nature and not to entertain concepts of subject and object is the practice of a bodhisattva. When encountering objects which please us, to view them like rainbows in summer, not ultimately real, however beautiful they appear, and to relinquish craving and attachment is the practice of a bodhisattva. The various forms of suffering are like the death of one's child in a dream. By clinging to deluded perceptions as real, we exhaust ourselves. Therefore, when encountering unfavorable circumstances, to view them as illusions is the practice of a bodhisattva. If those who wish for enlightenment must give away even their own bodies, how much more should it be true of material objects? Therefore, without expectation of result or reward, to give generously is the practice of a bodhisattva. If, lacking discipline, one cannot accomplish one's own good, it is laughable to think of accomplishing the good of others. Therefore, to observe discipline without samsaric motives is the practice of a bodhisattva. For a bodhisattva who desires the joys of virtue, all who harm him are like a precious treasure. Therefore, to cultivate patience toward all without resentment is the practice of a bodhisattva. Merely for their own sake, even Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas make efforts like someone whose hair is on fire, trying to put it out. Seeing this, for the sake of all beings, to practice diligence, the source of excellent qualities, is the practice of a bodhisattva. Knowing that through profound insight, thoroughly grounded in sustained calm, the disturbing emotions are completely conquered. To practice the concentration which utterly transcends the four formless states is the practice of a bodhisattva. In the absence of wisdom, perfect enlightenment cannot be attained through the other five perfections alone. Therefore, to cultivate wisdom combined with skillful means and free from the three concepts 
is the practice of a bodhisattva. If I do not examine my own defects, though outwardly a Dharma practitioner, I may act contrary to the Dharma. Therefore, continuously to examine my own faults and give them up is the practice of a bodhisattva. If, impelled by negative emotions, I relate the faults of other bodhisattvas, I will myself degenerate. Therefore, to not talk about the faults of anyone who has entered the Mahayana is the practice of a bodhisattva. Offerings and respect may bring discord and cause listening, reflection, and meditation to decline. Therefore, to avoid attachment to the homes of friends and benefactors is the practice of a bodhisattva. Harsh words disturb the minds of others and spoil our own bodhisattva practice. Therefore, to give up rough speech, which others find unpleasant, is the practice of a bodhisattva. When emotions become habitual, they are hard to get rid of with antidotes. Therefore, with mindfulness and vigilance, to seize the weapon of the antidote and crush attachment and other negative emotions the moment they arise is the practice of a bodhisattva. In short, wherever I am, whatever I do, to be continually alert and mindful, asking what is the state of my mind, and accomplishing the good of others is the practice of a bodhisattva. Dedicating to enlightenment through wisdom purified of the three concepts, all merit achieved by such endeavor to remove the suffering of numberless beings is the practice of a bodhisattva. Following the teachings of the holy beings, I have arranged the points taught in the sutras, tantras, and shastras as the 37 verses on the practice of a bodhisattva for the benefit of those who wish to train on the bodhisattva path. Since my understanding is poor and I have little education, this is no composition to delight the learned, but as it is based on the sutras and the teachings of holy beings, I think it is genuinely the practice of the bodhisattvas. However, it is hard for someone unintelligent like me to fathom the great waves of bodhisattvas' activities, so I beg the forgiveness of the holy ones for any contradictions, irrelevancies, and other mistakes. Through the merit arising from this, and through the power of the sublime bodhicitta, relative and absolute, may all beings become like the Lord Avalokiteshvara, who is beyond the extremes of samsara and nirvana. For his own benefit and that of others, Dogme, a teacher of scripture and logic, composed this text at Richin Pug in Nagulchu.